2009 survey on antibiotics in the late stage development pipeline. In a nutshell, our survey demonstrates tangible progress in the clinical development of new antibiotics that target infections caused by resistant gram-negative bacilli. However, and unfortunately, none of these drugs is available now, and our patients need drugs today. Also, quite unfortunately, we were unable to identify any candidate drug among the, those we found that is active against all resistant gram-negative bacilli. By way of brief background, infections caused by resistant bacteria, especially the so-called escape pathogens, continue to increase and cause significant morbidity and mortality, both in the United States and around the world. The lean pipeline for novel antibiotics to treat drug-resistant gram-negative bacilli is a cause of justifiable alarm. In our earlier survey in 2009, no antibiotic with a purely gram-negative spectrum had reached phase two of clinical development that's in patients. As Dr. Hughes mentioned, this is not an entirely new issue. Since 2004, IDSA has been concerned with the lack of progress in developing new antibiotics to treat resistant infections, especially gram-negative infections. As you'll hear at the meeting over the next few days, Infections are increasingly occurring that are resistant to all currently available antibiotic options. The need for new agents to treat infections caused by resistant gram-negative bacilli, resistant to all of our drugs, is immediate and even more urgent than at the time of our 2009 report. Further, the withdrawal of several large pharmaceutical companies from antibiotic research and development has compromised the infrastructure for discovering and developing new antibiotics especially here in the United States. As Dr. Hughes mentioned, IDSA proposed uh, legislative, regulatory, and funding solutions in our earlier 2004 policy report, and then more recently, recognizing the need for a new and more creative way of addressing the problem of resistance in the dwindling pipeline. In 2010, we launched the 10 by 20 initiative. This campaign calls for 10 novel, efficacious, and safe antibiotics by the year 2020. On World Health Day this year, IDSA issued the policy statement that Dr. Hughes just showed, combating antimicrobial resistance, policy recommendations to save lives. This provides clear suggestions for addressing the synergistic crises of increasing antimicrobial resistance and the decreasing availability of new antibiotics. In our presentation here at the meeting, we report on the state of clinical development and regulatory approval of new antibiotics in 2011. So what did we find? Despite ongoing efforts, only two new antibiotics, Televancin and Ceftaroline Fosamil, have been approved since our earlier report, and only one of our hoped for 10 by 20 drugs has been approved. In addition, the number of new antibiotics annually approved for marketing in the United States has continued to decline. Further, the number of large pharmaceutical companies, so-called Big Pharma, actively developing antibiotics also continues to decline. We identified nine drugs in clinical development for use against resistant gram-negative bacilli. Unfortunately, none of these is under study for pneumonia, neither community-acquired pneumonia, nor hospital-associated or ventilator-associated pneumonia, or bloodstream infection. These are among the most dangerous infections we treat and those for which we have the most severely limited options today. As we discovered, infections such as complicated urinary tract infection, skin infections, and intra-abdominal infection are the target of clinical syndromes. Of these nine molecules, only two have novel mechanisms of action, and only a few are active against the worst pathogens like Gasmetobacter uh, gomanii and Pseudomonas aeruginosa. None of these are active against all multidrug resistant communities. So pharma has heard IDSA's call to address the urgent need for antibiotics to treat multidrug resistant gram-negative bacilli. And we're encouraged to find nine drugs in the pipeline. That being said, we all know that with antibiotics, attrition happens, even in the later stages of development. So we can't count on getting all or even the majority of these nine compounds to the market. Further, very importantly, none of these drugs is available today, and our patients need new drugs now. Our prognosis for an even richer development environment requires several key things uh, in the terms of progress. 
First, we need to see progress and clarification of FDA regulatory and clinical trial guidances. Sponsor companies consistently identify the lack of regulatory clarity as a major, if not the major, disincentive for antibiotic development. Second, we need to see fair and appropriate economic incentives for small and large pharmaceutical companies. And ultimately, we really hope for a stable and robust research and development infrastructure that will allow development of drugs to continue for our children and our children's children. In the opinion of IPSA, it's more important than ever that a sustainable research and development infrastructure is created that can both respond to the challenges facing us with resistance today and the anticipated trends in the future.